This is a villager that will punch you back. And this is glass that you can't see through. And these are 27 Minecraft secrets you possibly didn't know. This secret sound controlled door. Using some redstone, pistons, and a skulk sensor, you can easily rig up a hidden door that only opens for specific sounds. For example, playing this goat horn. Well, maybe you'd want something a little quieter, but luckily you can set it to interact with just about any sound in the game, from footsteps to explosions. Just be sure to soak the sensor in water if you want to keep it from making noise. Otherwise, someone might hear it. Speaking of, it always seems like mobs are able to hear me from a mile away. Turns out, I just needed to start crouching. This makes it 20% harder for hostile mobs to find you. Hehehe, <laughs> I didn't know this game had stealth mechanics. Ugh. Actually, there's an even better way to hide yourself from these guys. You might already know that killing a mob with a charged creeper drops their head, but if you then wear the item, it'll make it a whopping 50% harder for that mob to notice you. Combining the two would make sneaking a breeze. But you know what's not a breeze? Finding these paintings. For some reason, Mojang decided to add four new paintings in Java version 1.19, but then made them nearly impossible to get. If you're in creative mode, then all you'll have to do is enter each of these commands. But if you're in survival, then I'm afraid you're out of luck, which is a shame because I know I'd love to hang these on my wall. Whoa! Uh, hey, hey there, buddy. Uh, this creeper is one of the deadliest and, well, that's my fault because if you throw a potion at a creeper and it explodes, it'll spread its effect around the area. You can use this to your advantage against groups of mobs or maybe even prank your friends with an unexpected creeper of slowness. Just don't charge it with lightning. That would make it too dangerous for anyone. Oh, also, you might want to stop riding horses and start riding llamas. Well, as long as you don't mind them taking the lead. These guys have a leg up over the competition and are able to swim through water deeper than two blocks. Ocean travel has never been easier. Well, at least ocean travel with an animal. Uh, land animal. Plus, they don't need apples to be tamed and can spit on your enemies. Just wish I could saddle them. Hey, give him back! Endermen love playing hard to hit and their teleporting abilities make it impossible to land an arrow shot. Even if you could get them to stand still, your attacks would just bounce right off. But it's not just arrows. The same can be said for any ranged attack from tridents to snowballs. These guys would be great at dodgeball, but not great at dodging water. <laughs> That's right, water potions aren't useless. Surprised? Yeah. Me too. Turns out that you can use splash potions filled with water to put out fire blocks, making this an extremely useful tool whenever your house catches fire. Not only that, but it can transform dirt into mud or even harm certain mobs. So it might be worth bringing a few with you on your next nether adventure, along with a pickaxe, of course, which is actually the least functional tool in the game. Well, hose can till soil, shovels create paths, and axes modify wood and copper, but unfortunately, old reliable doesn't do much except break blocks. Maybe we'll get an added use for it one day, but for now, I'll have to mine. With the help of this pig! That's right, this pig right here is gonna lead me straight to diamond. How, you ask? Well, all we need to do is dig a two-block tunnel and place some slabs above, like so. Then, if we ride a pig through it, we can actually see through the surrounding stone, creating this cool x-ray effect. Ah finally found you. Wait, is that a stronghold? Ah, silverfish are terrible. But did you know they used to be even worse? Back in early Minecraft beta, these little guys had 20 HP, just as much as a player. Being swarmed by a group of them would be certain death, so I'm glad they eventually reduced it down to 8 HP instead. Speaking of early Minecraft, there have always been a number of methods to move your items around, though one of the oldest and coolest is the glass elevator. Using only some glass and a dropper, any item items ejected will automatically rise straight to the top. This can be used to create a quick and easy pipeline, or even as a decoration for your base. Uh, I just love watching them pop around, but more than that, I love spying on my friends through some one-way glass. This can be done without using any mods. Here's how it works. First, you're gonna need some glass, invisible item frames, and a map. The map can either be from a special layout you created, or a map generator website. Once you have all the materials, you'll be able to create the perfect spy base. Also, great for interrogations. Why haven't you subscribed to Dr. Bunks? <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> Intimidation is a great tool. And what's more intimidating than a full netherite beacon? Beacons are already plenty expensive, but how much would it cost you to make one of these? Well, in doing the math, we would have to mine a total of 5,904 ancient debris. And that's not even counting the other 5,904 gold that you would need to craft the ingots. Huh, uh, you know, this is one dream that I think I'll be giving up on. You could easily just make one out of gold instead. Just make sure to bring these little guys with you. You see, when fighting hostile mobs, axolotls provide health regeneration on every kill. And the more you have around you, the longer the regen will last. They can even remove the mining fatigue effect. So who needs buckets of milk when you've got buckets of axolotl? Though you might also want to bring the rare turtle shell helmet, which when worn underwater will temporarily grant the water breathing effect. If you're willing to wait for baby turtles to grow up, you'll eventually have enough scoots to craft this beauty. It's just unfortunate that you can't craft a full set of this armor. Guess you'll have to stick with green dye. Oh, jeez. Guess these guys are scared of turtles. Or maybe it's this raid? Uh, during raids, villagers will sometimes sweat in fear. Kind of crazy that these guys are so scared, even with their iron golems around, but hey, if I was as defenseless as a villager, maybe I'd be sweating too. But what if villagers could defend themselves? Funnily enough, there actually is a way. Using some armor enchanted with thorns and a dispenser, we can equip villagers so that they deal damage whenever they're attacked. This can be a handy way to protect valuable villagers from death or even prank your friends. But what if their armor isn't strong enough to stop a zombie horde? Well, then you'd probably be left with a zombie villager. You might already know that these guys can be cured with a weakness potion and enchanted golden apple. However, you probably didn't know that this process can be sped up with the simple addition of some iron bars and a bed. Aw, looks like they just need to feel a little more comfortable. Okay, so this is gonna sound evil, but you probably want to turn your villagers into zombies. And hear me out, because if you cure them, the villagers will be so grateful that they'll offer a permanent discount for their trades. Not only that, but if you complete this process enough, you can eventually get even the steepest prices down to a single emerald. Talk about a steal! Just be careful because zombification doesn't work the same for all difficulties. Villagers will always turn on hard, but only 50% of the time on normal and never on easy. Speaking of zombies, they're actually smarter than you think. And that's because, despite looking identical, some have a chance to to spawn in as leaders. All zombie mobs have a chance to call for reinforcements when they're damaged, which alerts nearby zombies and can even spawn more in. However, leader zombies are 50 to 75% more likely to spawn extra zombies, meaning that if you're not careful, these usually weak mobs can overwhelm you. <laughs> Actually, I might die here. Quickly switching to creative, here's a building tip for all you talented architects. If you add a hashtag to the front of your search, you can filter by game tag. This, for example, allows you to find everything labeled as wood, a flower, or a fish. There are even some stranger tags, like beacon payment items, or piglin love. And while we're here, let's grab some end frames so we can build an end portal? This doesn't look right. Well, if you've ever struggled to ignite an end portal, here's why. You see, the frames have to be placed facing inwards in order to work. But with enough messing around, we can get this abomination, which still works great though. Just like this underwater TNT. Now, water and gunpowder don't mix. However, by placing a falling block above the TNT before we ignite it, we can trick the game into thinking the TNT isn't actually underwater, making this a quick and easy way to mine for resources or break through ocean monuments, even with mining fatigue. That's great and all, but what if you wanted weaker TNT on land? Well, by placing one slab under the block, we can again confuse the game, this time limiting its destruction on the surface. But, uh, oh, there goes my cat. Uh, no worries though. Cats are invincible, or at least that's what they'd have you believe. They can never take fall damage, no matter the height, not even if they land on some pointed dripstone. Well, like like the old saying goes, I guess a cat always lands on its feet. And while we're at it, this cat might be hiding some dark secrets. Because while others can spawn normally in villages, this guy can only spawn during a full moon. You could also find one in a swamp hut, then you'd have to fight off a witch, and I don't know if her pet would like me after that. So let's move on to one of the more interesting blocks in the game. You may already know that campfires can be used to cook different foods at the same time, but what if the flames go out before you get to eat? We could always ignite it with a good old flint and steel, but that's boring. So instead, why not just use your fire aspect sword or shoot a flaming arrow or just walk into it after a quick lava bath? Ugh, ew. On second thought, maybe 
not the lava one. Another handy block is the torch. You know, one torch could save you a whole stack of blocks. If you're ever low on resources, but want to build a staircase, you need to start using it. By placing blocks on its side, we can lay out the blocks in a stair formation without the need for extra material, making this perfect for any adventure.